You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to Ivory Focus Radio. We are here once again. And today, man, we have another show lining for y'all. We're going to talk to our special guest. She is a life coach and also she does spiritual guidance. Her name is Annie Rich. She has a website you can check out. It's AnnieRich.com. And yeah, first and foremost, I want to welcome you to the show. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing wonderful. I'm excited to be here. I appreciate you. You also have a book that we can talk about a little bit later. It's uh, Back to Yourself, uh, Free Your Mind from Conditioning and Reconnect with, to Your True Self. So before we jump into that, though, kind of for our audience, touch on a little bit about your life story, man. Give us a little uh, back story on yourself. Such a huge question. I <laughs> know. Uh, you don't have to go back when you're born, but you can just kind of maybe talk I know, about it. I know what you mean. <laughs> I know. I would I would call, like, we call it a spiritual awakening. But what for me spiritual awakening is the moment I realized and I became aware of my thoughts and I started to live more mindfully. So I almost count my life since then when I realized how my thoughts my actions everything is literally creating my life how i am the creator of my life so before that it's almost like i don't remember my life but i remember i was i have a son he's almost six and i was pregnant with my son and i remember i was complaining about something that if i get that thing i don't even remember what it was that i would be finally happy and i remember my ex-husband so lovingly looked at me and he was like you know what you have been always saying that about everything and you get it and you still mm-hmm. feel unhappy. And I remember it was almost like the energy rush that came into my body. And I was like, oh my God, he's right. And I realized how I have been always longing for something for it to make me happy. And then it was when my journey started. Obviously, the change didn't come immediately. I gave birth. Uh, I gained a, lot, gained a lot of weight. And that's the desperation of me wanting to feel like myself again, that's where I started my spiritual journey. That's where I started exercising, doing yoga, and I did yoga teacher training. And through the writing assignments, I reconnected to my passion for writing. I started my blog, then I wrote the book, then I traveled around the US, and then we sold everything and lived in a van, finished my book there so everything almost came to that one small moment of me realizing that I am the only person who can make myself happy and with that said this is a good way to segue into just the importance of not just being you and and yourself but the importance of I can hear you Oops, (laughs) Oops, <laughs> I, I just I <laughs> realized I had myself on muted. My bad. So I repeat that question. My bad. Yeah. So with that said, <laughs> we can uh, talk about the importance of just being you and and yeah. being you takes being creative as well. So how did you exactly. learn to embrace your creativity? I remember my mom would always joke about me how some things never change, how I am still somehow the same person. As a child, if I entered the bus or the train, I would literally talk to everyone and me leaving the any public transport, any public gathering, it was like people knew my name and they would be like, goodbye, Annie. And as I grew up, I was always that person with my family, my family members, but I learned to almost put a mask on myself when I would just as a teenager, even in my early, I would say like until 18, to just, I was being myself always with the people that I loved, my friends, my family members, but with others, when people would talk to me in the university, they would be like, oh, you are so sweet, because the face that I was walking with (laughs) was just, I have no idea what people were thinking. But throughout the years, I realized that this is my power of me loving to talk to the people me just being curious about people's names and their life stories as you are curious that's why you have this podcast and it takes courage you are right because if we are being ourselves and if 
people don't like ourselves, then we get rejected and that's painful. But if you stop almost like living the way you think you should be living and living the way you want to be living, not because this is the right thing to do, it just feels good, then somehow everything around you changes and people just accept you for who you are. I'm always talking like about the universe or about manifestation. And even for the people who think this is crazy, they just smile because of how I truly believe about it. And this is just who I am. And when your intention is right for being who you are, when you are not trying to show anything to anyone or prove anything to anyone and you are just embracing yourself, it just comes off in the right way. Because if your intention is not right, if you are trying to prove anything to anyone or just belong or fit in, people can feel that. Unconsciously, they feel it. So you're right. It takes courage because if you get rejected, then you get rejected for who you are. But you have to remember that it's so much more painful to be accepted for who you are not and for who people think you are rather than just being rejected, rejected for who you are. And that rarely happens, to be honest. So it's so much better to be yourself. Once again, talking to our guest for today, Annie Rich. You can go to her website, AnnieRich.com. And you also, uh, you talk about on your website how, you know, at the age of 20, when you gain some weight due to your, your pet, uh, pregnancy, you yeah. talk about that journey as well and reconnecting to you know, writing and be on the blog, but also practicing yoga and doing meal prep. Kind of touch on that process uh, with the audience. What inspired you to take that step to say, you know what, I know I'm here, but this is my goal is to, you know, take care of this situation. Of course, such a um, good question. I can't, so I was... 19 years old when I got married I come from country of Georgia and this is a good age to get married this is not too young or too old people wouldn't have any opinion like for example like 14 is young but at 19 people would say like oh it's a good age to get married because I know and it's in the right. US that's, that's different that's that correct pronunciation. and I was a mother when I was 20 of, years old of stories and as I and... said like I loved myself I always felt sexy I loved being in center of the attention and suddenly I found myself overweight because I gained 58 pounds I had stretch marks everywhere and I'm like 20 years old. I hated my body. I was crying every single day. And this is not just even a joke. I was crying every single day for a month, maybe more. I would call my mom and just cry because I thought my life was over because I was not beautiful anymore. I didn't feel confident anymore. And after six months of me going back and forth, I was like, I have to change something because I, I could not survive with looking at myself in the mirror and hating myself because it's just too important for me how I look. And it's important for me for how I look because it makes me feel good. It makes me feel confident. It's like you would not go out without shower or without your hair being not brushed or without your clothes being clean. That's how it was for me to be in the shape. And I, you know how it's like when you decide to change whole universe almost like gives you the opportunity. So I mentioned I wanted to start work out. And my ex-husband at the time was studying in the University of Minnesota. And he told me how the girls there go to core power yoga, which is one of the yoga studios. I think it's in all major states. And I was like, okay, I'm going to try. And I went there and I started yoga sculpt. It's like a workout. And I realized how amazing I felt by me just creating change. And I tried to change my diet. I tried to listen to the podcast. I decided to take control over in my hands and change my life and spend that energy that I was spending in crying and complaining to actually doing something about my problem. Because you cannot avoid problems in your life. You cannot avoid gaining weight when you are pregnant, but you have to focus on the solutions. And then I was introduced to power yoga. And then I started doing yoga and it helped me. There are so many mindfulness practices, centering prayer, just praying, meditation, 
yoga is just a tool so yoga also helped me to connect to my body and then eating the right things and giving my body what it needed because i come from a country that diet culture is huge that every woman complains i would say 99 percent of women think they are overweight they are on diet and hungry all the time so i realized i had to nourish my body i had to give myself everything that i needed and to be honest in three months i felt like a different person all the weight came off because of the right diet because of exercising and my life hasn't changed i was still sleep deprived i was still stay at home mother my ex-husband was still studying and working out full full time at a time i think full time at a time so i was still with my baby all the time only time i had was either evening or early morning so my life hasn't changed it's just how i looked at it changed and i went back to shape and then when you realize and gain self-trust when you know you can do something your whole life changes and you apply that to every aspect of your life you said something kind of important there you said how i looked at it changed and i think that's exactly. that's important to to note because until we look at our challenges differently then they remain a challenge. And exactly. when you approach it in a new perspective, it's almost like uh, my guests who go on the show, they, they talk about, you know, how fear, you know, too much of it can keep you from, you know, living your life purpose. And, you know, too little of it, you're just like, you're not living. So <laughs> it's like one of those things where you got to have it in order for you to stay challenged, but you don't allow it to consume you to where you don't ever try again. And I like how you said how you had you had to look at the situation differently. And that kind of propels you into a new direction and kind of goes into uh, your book, Back to Yourself. You, you kind of explore that, you know, uh, how people may be feeling lost or feeling like, you know, they're questioning where they are in life or whatever. And if you're not careful, you're you're chasing, guess what, yourself for the rest of your life versus exactly. living. Kind of touch on on your book and, and some of the points that you uh, highlight. Now, the intention behind writing my book, I remember I was, when I arrived in the U.S., I didn't know English. So I knew something, but I couldn't talk. I was, I would say like, hey, how are you? But other than that, I didn't really know English. But what I decided to do, because I was really curious, like my curiosity has never changed. I actually, I remember my ex-husband would come home from work and he would just tell me some stories. And the stories were just podcasts that he listened. And I was like, oh my God, those stories seem so interesting. I want to listen to the podcast. And I had a lot of time in a sense of like when I was walking with a stroller, I would just listen and consume so many podcasts. That's how I learned English. That's like I learned so much through listening to the podcast. And I remember one time I was listening to a certain conversation and I was like, what if I can write a book? And you know, like you go like, no, 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 like why would I write a book? And then she was saying how we have to listen to those what ifs because they are our guide in a way. And I was like, maybe I can write a book. Okay, let me, let me do it. And I was taking a mommy trip a long time. I was on my plane on my way to Miami. Also, not a good idea if you want to take a time to rest, don't go to Miami, please. I don't know why I did that. And But I remember I wrote the outline for my book. And the book that... The finished product is completely different. What I thought I would be writing and what I wrote in the flow state was completely different. But I remember I was just writing these chapters. And, you know, I have heard from many people, it just came to me. I was in the flow state. I love writing. I, that's just how I clear my mind. And it's almost like book wrote itself. And I would just, something came up and the chapters and then the headings and 
I would just think about it. I would just find answers while I was writing the book. And I realized that in this process, I was just finding myself. I was just meeting the true self, who I was. And the process was so beautiful. The, I even finished it while I was full-time when lifing in the Hawaii. I don't remember which city, but there was a library, beautiful library. And I finished writing there, and I remember the feeling that I got. And I was like, no, this book is like named called, have to be called like Back to Yourself. Because that's brought me back to yourself. And it's almost like, you know how we all love to get baby steps? It's almost like baby steps to spirituality. And it gives it gives you something to think about. It's like responsibility, about happiness, about so many small things that can lead to you to the big things. Man, you just hit something there. That was, that was pretty good. Yeah, I like that, <laughs> that analogy. Uh, going back to baby steps. Because... You're not the first to say it. Someone else said on my show how, uh, you know, uh, they were a sibling. Uh, they had like, uh, they were the 10th uh, child. They were the youngest. And he mentioned about just that whole, <sighs> that whole mindset of just being curious, you know, because when you're young, you just have that infinite uh, imagination. And when you get older, if you're not careful, you doubt every single thing that you think about. Like you said earlier, you know, writing a book is one thing, but starting the process is, is another. Because you're going to have doubts, you know, thoughts like, uh, yeah, I probably can't write a book. But Who am I to write a book? Yeah. <laughs> But until I like what you said, uh, another thing you said in the show about looking at the situation differently and questioning, you know, what if, what if I wrote a book? You know, what if I started yoga? What if, if I started exercising? Because not to be funny or a comedian, but it's working. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. if you... If you continue to do the same thing you're doing that's not getting you nowhere in life where it's causing you fear or whatever, whatever, well, it's working because that's what you're choosing. It's the moment when you say, what if I take a different route? You know, what if I did something totally different? You know, what if I do try? You know, and you just fill in the blank. Because if we really are truly honest with, with ourselves, we fill in the blank every day. So if we don't like the situation we're in, we probably have to stop doing the very thing that's leading us into that situation. And we have to start asking ourselves, what if, you know, what if I play the guitar? You know, what if I go back to school? Because until then, you don't have an answer. Exactly. Man, I feel like Poetry snapping, finger snapping. <laughs> but no, that's deep. You you are completely right. Those methods, the questions we ask ourselves, is what opens up all the doors into infinite possibilities. Yeah, and man, by the way, listen, I'm Focus Radio talking to our guest uh, Annie Rich. You know her, her website, AnnieRich.com. Can't believe time is already flying, man. It feels like we just started <laughs> like five seconds ago, but. Uh, you also have a podcast and yes. kind of uh, share that with the audience. What's the name of your show and what are some of the things that you talk about? So that's my second baby almost. The podcast is called Intuitively Rich. And the big thing for me is to going back to baby steps. There are, there are so many information about the goals and strategies and money and success and intuition. And all, I almost want to find the simplest ways of what can I do today? What can I do right now? How can I live intuitively rather than listening to all the experts? How can they teach me to listen to my own intuition so I can live the life that I desire and the life that was created for me, not for someone else? So that's my purpose. That's my intention for a podcast. And we talk about all topics like mind, body, soul, 
success, money, spirituality, tarot cards, anything that you could imagine, setting goals, habits, but more in the sense of like teaching you to listen to your own intuition and just take at least one thing from the conversation, make it your own, apply it to your life today, right now, and create the lasting change to just create and achieve the life that you always like secretly dreamed of and you always believed like oh no that's not for me that's only for other people but not for me but it is for you when you look at uh, all the things you accomplished so far i mean you don't have to give the whole list but if you look at some of the highlights like the top 10 plays if you will of your life how do you use those highlights to feel uh, feel more motivation? Because, you know, I'm getting as, you know, life happens to everybody. You know, mm-hmm. we all have our ups and our downs. But how do you use your, your past achievements to inspire you to continue to do bigger and, and better things? So I am a first child. I'm a first grandchild. I was also for 13 years, one year in preschool and 12 years in school. I was in my aunt's school and it was private school. So I always had to be perfect. My whole life, I had amazing grades in school, in the university. And for me, all of those achievements, even for my family and family members, they were never, it was never a big deal, me achieving something in the family. So for me, I almost had to go, like, look, almost take a step back and realize that all the small things that I do are achievements in my life. And for me, at this very stage of my life, the smaller things are bigger achievements rather than me thinking of what is the next big thing that I can do. Today, I'm like, how can I be more present? How can I give myself whatever I need? How can I give my body what it needs? How can I enjoy every single moment, even if I don't want to enjoy the moment, even even if I'm doing something I don't want to, but I choose to. So at this very moment, the smallest things that I can do today and focus on today to create the future that I want tomorrow, it's the biggest achievements of me not being reactive when someone says something that I don't like, of me trying to be compassionate for the people, of me arguing better being responsive rather than reactive. Those are the biggest achievements at this very moment. And I think like this is a cycle. And then I go back to what can I, what is the biggest thing that can I do right now? But at this moment, it's like the smallest things that give me the most fulfillment and the sense of I'm achieving something, I'm doing something. Yeah, I like that. Success is in the details. I agree. I think when you get older, you start to realize the important things are usually the small things that add up exactly. to the bigger picture. And it's, it's like if if you allow yourself time to grow, then... It's like going to... So I'm going to add one thing. It's almost like going back to foundation. Yeah. Because why I was achieving what I had didn't have a right intention there. So I'm almost removing all the layers going back and creating the right foundation on which then i can just create bigger and achieve my bigger goals but i'm almost going back and removing anything that doesn't belong into my life if it makes sense yeah exactly Mm -hmm. it's like you just jump in my head with with my thoughts because that's exactly what i was going to say like it's it's uh well similar because it's like when you when you're allowing yourself to grow a part of that growth is simply recognizing what doesn't work. And soon as you recognize what's not working, sooner or later, you're going to be like, okay, time out. <laughs> There's got to be more to life mm-hmm. than this. You know, it, it's time for a, ch- a change. You know, it's time for a new way of thinking. It's time for, you know, a new direction. It's time for a, a better circle, better influence, you know, in my life. Uh, time for me to look in the mirror and say, okay, let's go back, like uh, Annie said earlier, let's go back to the baby steps and get that foundation right. Because if you think you're going to just have this amazing 
a successful life without any structure or foundation. Um, wake me up when that works. <laughs> Because I, I don't think that'll ever work for anybody. Anybody who has a powerful story or has, you know, a, a huge accomplishment in their life, it came by some kind of structure and the right influences of people or something that guided them. You know, it's like having a system that guides you to the next opportunity. Because that's what success really is. Success is like you graduating from this level to the next level to the next level. And then you you give back. You help someone else do the same. Graduate from, you know, the previous levels, because that's what it takes to be successful. You have to learn and apply. You can't just learn and not apply. You you have to do it. And when you do it and take that action, take that risk. Boom! You have a book. You're on this show. You're talking about your brand. Well, it's because you're in that experience. A lot of us wants to be on the outside daydreaming. Oh, wouldn't it be like that? Wouldn't that be fun? But the problem is we don't actually take that action. Amen. Man, that was like a, that was perfect. What else can I say, man? I think, man, time is already up, but man, uh, Thanks for being on the show, talking about uh, what you do and talking about your book. People can get uh, your book on Amazon, Back to Yourself, Free Your Mind from Conditioning and Reconnect to Your Truest Self. And they also go to your website, uh, AnnieRich.com. Before we let you go, man, what's, what's something you want our audience to know before we check out? Could you repeat the question? Before we let go, what would you like to uh, tell the audience before we check out? Oh. oh, my God. So many things. But what comes right now, because as I have few tattoos, many tattoos, and one of them that says, I was just looking at it, says, I am enough. And like you hear this word, a lot of people talk about you are enough, I am enough. But as you are on this journey of finding meanings for things, meanings for yourself. It's like you are truly enough. If I have changed my body, if I have started working out because I love myself so much, the journey would have been way more fulfilling. I changed it because I hated it. So if you just change yourself and your life and you start it from the, because you are so enough, and because you like yourself so much or you love yourself, obviously you have to also go to that place of loving yourself. But because when you when you start building your life from that place of you being enough, you have no idea how much more easier and fulfilling and everything will be so much more beautiful because you are enough as you are. Even if you don't achieve anything, all of this achievement is man-made. Like we were not being born to become a millionaire or have a certain house or have a certain uh, type of car. Those things are amazing. And I love all the luxury things. But if you go back, you are not created for all of that. You are enough. Even if you do nothing, you are simply enough. And when you realize that, I think you become more motivated and going back to what ifs. It's like, hmm, if I'm enough and if I don't have to achieve anything for me to become enough, what else can I do to enjoy this life more? Is it a car? Just be the, that intention should be like, I would really enjoy driving that car. I would really enjoy living in that house and not that you are not enough. It's just you're enough. Once again, talking to Annie Rich, go to her website, AnnieRich.com. I want to say once again, thank you for your time talking to us. You have a good one. Thank you.